Welcome in, Tiger fans. It's Omaha week. It's finally here. It's Friday, June 16th. The games are starting today on the first side of the brackets. Uh, but we're, we're here to bring you Bayou Bengal Bites, everything LSU sports news. How are you doing today, Tyler? Yeah, doing pretty good. It's like Christmas morning for me. The College World Series uh, starts today. We got some good games on tap for you Friday, Saturday. I know that there's some chance of rain Saturday, which shouldn't surprise uh, any LSU sure fans. Is. But, uh, yeah, definitely excited uh, to be talking about College World Series and also to be talking about the 2024 uh, SEC schedule that it just released as well. Yeah, let's get into it. So the SEC had a selection show-esque. It looks like uh, almost a schedule release show like the NFL does where they release their 2024 SEC opponents. We don't have times or dates, but we do know who LSU will be facing in 2024. Uh, to start it off, we'll go full schedule. Uh, this date was already set. We're going to Las Vegas uh, on September 1st, Labor Day, to, to take on the USC Trojans at Allegiant Stadium. So that'll be a, a fun Pac-12 matchup there for us. Or will they be in the Big Ten by then? Yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll be in the Big Ten uh, by then. Okay. They'll be so, in 2024, UCLA and USC will be making their move. Okay, so well, that'll be a Big Ten matchup for us. So then, of course, uh, Nickel State over in Tiger Stadium. That date's uh, Saturday, September 7th. And then the third week, another Big Ten matchup will be LSU versus UCLA, also in Baton Rouge, part of that home-and-home home that we had a couple of years ago on September 21st. Um, and then the uh, last known date we know is South Alabama, so September 28th, to open up the four uh weeks of the regular season. Then it gets dicey. We don't know when these dates are, but LSU will be taking on Ole Miss at home in Tiger Stadium, Vanderbilt at home in Tiger Stadium, Oklahoma, welcome to the SEC. Your first year, you're traveling in Tiger Stadium, so uh, that's going to be a nice rematch of the 2019. Was it the Peach Bowl where we put up yeah. like 67 on them? Uh, so it'll be good to see the Sooners again. Hopefully we have the same outcome. Uh, and then we have Alabama also in Tiger Stadium. That rounds out the SEC home opponents. And then going away from Baton Rouge, uh, we got South Carolina. We'll be traveling to Columbia. It's been a while since we've been there. I, I actually don't even remember the last time LSU traveled to South Carolina. So that would be a cool game. And um, We'll have, of course, the Texas A&M. We'll keep them playing in College Station. We'll be traveling to Florida to take on the Gators and then traveling to Fayetteville to take on the Woo Pig Subi Razorbacks. Tyler, what's your reaction to our SEC schedule this year? I think overall, the way it looks right now, it's a pretty favorable schedule. If you looked at Oklahoma's schedule, they have an absolute gauntlet of a schedule. Yeah, welcome Alabama, to the SEC. Yeah, and Alabama has to play Georgia at home. Uh, so I think that LSU, you can say, quote unquote, the easy side. But right now, I mean, that could change. Like looking at the rosters now, I think, uh, you know, LSU could definitely go through this, you know, this is going to be Garrett Nussmeyer's. Uh, this is going to be his first year. Jane Daniels right, is going right. to be gone. You're going to have a lot of key guys off of this roster. Uh, but I'm happy to see Florida still on the schedule. That's an animal robbery. I'm not happy to not have Mississippi State anymore. I feel like yeah, I was going to mention that. This is the first time that we haven't seen this one since World War II days, and then we haven't seen Auburn. I think that Texas A&M. This is they're just trying to force this rivalry. I, yep, yep. Ever since the seven overtime game happened and, and that debacle, so I just feel like that's more of a forced rivalry. Uh, so that's really the only you know disagreement I have is not having Auburn and not having Mississippi State. But if you look at the home schedule, you know you get Alabama at home. Alabama is probably going to be tough out. Ole Miss, you don't know who they're going to have, especially with Lane Kiffin 
Oklahoma, we know them uh, from that epic Peach Bowl game. And then Vanderbilt is, is Vanderbilt. I don't think that they're going to be good. Uh, yeah, it's nice to see that we got Vanderbilt coming yeah. to town. Maybe an easy yeah. SEC Yeah, it's been a couple there. of road consecutive road trips that we've been to Nashville. Uh, so this is like the first time I don't even remember the last time that I've even seen Vanderbilt and Tiger Stadium. It definitely hasn't been since my days, it's it feels like. Uh, but it's good to see that the Golden Boot uh, rivalry is still there with Arkansas, like I mentioned, the Florida. And like you mentioned as well, South Carolina, we haven't been to Columbia. We were supposed to go in 2015, but they had uh, some floods, so they moved the, the game to Tiger Stadium. So that game hasn't happened. Uh, so I would have liked to see Texas, obviously, uh, you know, them coming to Tiger Stadium, but it's I'll definitely take Oklahoma. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I'm sure we'll have Texas on the slate. I believe we have that home and home scheduled for 2025, so they'll be coming to to Baton Rouge then. Um, you mentioned Mississippi State and Auburn. Uh, I hate to see those those games not be on the list, but like you said, the Texas A&M game it was a forced type of ri- rivalry after that seven overtime. But now I think it's it's brewed into one. I mean, it's like back and forth every year that it goes uh, on who wins. So. We'll see. Uh, I am glad that we don't have to hear the cowbells anymore. That's one nice thing. But, I mean, in 2025, we might be getting a year off. Who knows? Yeah, we get a year off from the cowbells. So, um, you know, let us know in the comments section what you think of the schedule. Who do you want to see maybe 2025 when they release that? Uh, It's supposed to go to a nine-game season. But that that was voted on a couple couple of months ago. So, We'll see uh, what it plays out. But for now, we know the SEC opponents home and away. We just don't know the times. I'm sure Alabama will be first week in November, as it always is, on ESPN, though, not CBS. So that'll be a good thing. Uh, But with that, let's get to our baseball, because that's what everybody's here for. So I'm sure if you're here for the Omaha Baseball Talk, you know that LSU took down Kentucky two games to none uh, last weekend in the Super Regional. Paul Skeens came out, looked dominant on the Friday game. Ty Floyd came, or I'm sorry, Saturday game uh, at 9 o'clock at night due to the weather delays, uh, but the, the box was rocking and the Tigers had it going for them. That was 14 nothing, wasn't it? Was the score of that one? Yep. Yeah, so uh, Sunday, Ty Floyd came out, struggled a little bit. Uh, they had a, they had a walk or an opening home run for Kentucky, uh, which seems to happen with Ty. He lets up one or two home runs just because his, his fastball seems, seems to rise up in the zone, but when he's on, he's on. Um, you know, I believe they went from Ty to Riley Cooper, and Cooper came in and just pitched great uh, innings, really gave time for the offense to come to life. And then, I mean, Gavin Gidry, man, you can't say enough about this kid. Comes in, throws strikes, shuts the door. Uh, he threw three innings. I expected to see Thatcher Hurd come out to close the game, but they said, no, Gavin, it's yours. Finish it. Tigers sweep. We're in Omaha. Tyler, what are your thoughts from the Super Regional? Yeah, I think that the Super Regional couldn't have gone any better uh, for the Fighting Tigers. Uh, you know, you had that long awaited weather delay, even though it didn't yep. rain a drop uh, in Baton Rouge. But I think that worked it favored okay. them. It favored yeah, the home crowd. Okay. It, was a, it was a night game at the box. And we all know that if you're an LSU fan, night games just hit different, not only in football, but in baseball. Uh, so 14 to nothing is obviously. Uh, a massive blowout. Uh, it got st- the offense got started by Trey Morgan. He had two home runs. It was just a home run derby. Uh, Gavin Dugas had one. Tanks had two. And so the bats were just rolling on on Saturday. And Paul Skeens was Paul Skeens. Uh, he had his uh, standing ovation, and then they went to the bullpen. So Saturday though uh, was a little bit of a, eh, a little bit of a slow start, especially you already said it about Ty Floyd. Uh, you know his fastball that was his only pitch. He couldn't really find his breaking ball at times. It, it was a little bit inconsistent. Uh, but the bats were able to get it going. K below so clutch again with a three run bomb to get them up four to one. Kentucky had two more solo shots to get it to to four or three, but LSU. His so offense uh, was able to fight back, and then Dylan Cruz got his standing oh, ovation in his Cruz last at bat in Alex Box Stadium. Gave everyone chills in the stadium. Uh, he hit a, a a double down the line, got two RBIs in, made it eight to three, and you just knew from there that LSU was going to book their trip to Omaha. It definitely has been a while. Twenty seventeen, it was six years ago, and the last time that they got up just short against the Florida Gators. So. I expect this team uh, to be on a mission. They are definitely playing the best brand of baseball. They had that 
little rut in the in, you know in the dirt there in the in the season losing yeah, a we series stretch there and, towards the end losing a series to Mississippi State but that's just the SEC it's a gauntlet every team can beat you week by week and once again we're gonna have to be facing an SEC team yeah you just knew that with ten teams in the field we're already facing Kentucky you already played a two lane team so it feels like this whole postseason has just been LSU playing repeats outside of Oregon State. So we will see uh, if they can, you know, continue this momentum on Omaha. But Super Regional couldn't have asked uh, for any more, especially from your bullpen and then also your offense. No, I definitely agree. Well, let's get into our Omaha preview. So 2023 Omaha College World Series taking place starting today, June 16th, running to June 25th, possibly June 26th. A little shorter than previous years. It's normally two weeks now we're looking at about 10 days. Um, got eight teams. Let's go through it. We got uh, game one will be Oral Roberts taking on TCU at one o'clock uh, today. So in about an hour. Um, and then we got Virginia taking on Florida on um, one side of the bracket. And then on the LSU side, we have Stanford taking on Wake Forest Saturday, game three. And then the nightcap prime time, we got our LSU Fighting Tigers taking on the Tennessee Volunteers. You mentioned uh, LSU has been playing repeat games this whole uh, postseason. Here's another repeat game. We played Tennessee beginning of, uh, towards the beginning of SEC play. Won that series two to three. Uh, the Friday night game or Thursday night game was electric with Paul Skeens on the mound and Chase Dolander. I mean, that was an absolute pitcher's duel. I'm imagining that we see that matchup again uh, come tomorrow. Now, starting pitchers have not been named. I know Tennessee's been going with Lindsay a lot on game uh, in their Friday or game one games, but I mean, I feel like Tony Vitale has got to know. He's got to throw his best pitcher with Chase Dolander out there game one. So, Tyler, you think we're going to see Dolander versus Skeens? Uh, Vitale actually already said uh, that he's going to go with Andrew Lindsay. He, okay. he wants to stick to what he's been rocking with. Uh, we did see, like you mentioned, Chase Dolander go up against this same uh, LSU lineup and, and fare pretty well. And, you know, he got in game number one. Like you mentioned, they had that Jordan Thompson clutch, right. uh, you know, bases clear and double. That really brought the game, but that series w- was absolutely close. I uh, you know that Tennessee fans uh, have been bringing it up. It's it, you know this is going to be a battle. This is going to be a non-ending battle between the two teams. So I, I expect Andrew Lindsay to be on the mound, and if they win that one, Tennessee is definitely going to be set up. You have Chase Dolander going definitely. up against Game Two, and they'll face off against the winner of Wake Forest and Stanford, which I think that's probably going to be Wake Forest. Yeah, so, I mean, let, let's make our picks here for, for game winners. We got Oral Roberts, TCU. We got the four seed, Oral Roberts. You could call them a Cinderella team, but they aren't playing like one. I mean, they have been dominant uh, in the Eugene Regional, Super Regional, played great. Uh, so, Oral Roberts, TCU, who you got? Yeah, well, this uh, whenever we put this out, this game might be going on, so we might look like idiots or might look like geniuses. Uh, but Oral Roberts has definitely been the Cinderella story uh, of this tournament. They're – the, you know, we've seen four seeds uh, make it to Omaha. We saw Stony Brook, which I'm sure LSU fans know heavily about, and then Fresno yes. State, the Aaron Judge team, or what I like to call them. Uh, so they've definitely been a good story. TCU, though, has been one of the hottest teams in the country. Uh, and the regionals, they just absolutely destroyed Arkansas. And Arkansas is one of my teams to go deep in this tournament, maybe potentially make it to the national championship series. Uh, so I think that TCU behind Trey Richardson, he has been the story of this team. I think that TCU's pitching uh, did really well against Indiana State. So I think that Old Roberts uh, is definitely a team to not mess around, but you got to respect uh, the play of TCU right now. So I'm going to go with the Horned Frogs uh, to win game number one. Just to be different from you, I'll pick the Oral Roberts since they put out their Omaha merchandise as Oral Aha was their Omaha play on words. So hey, they're doing Oral pretty Roberts. well in the Jello Shot Challenge. Yeah, too. I was gonna I was gonna bring that up here in a second. So I've got the live update from noon in Omaha. Jello Rocco's Jello Shot Challenge. Of course, the record was set by Ole Miss last year. Um, I I thought the numbers were gonna slow down because with inflation, the jello shots went from three dollars to five dollars, so a little bit of an increase. But looking at the list, uh, no surprise, LSU leading at 659 jello shots purchased so far. But uh a uh, kind of a dark horse out of nowhere. TCU went from like 25 the other day to they're at 521. So the horn frog fans have showed up in Omaha. That's game day, so they're gonna definitely yeah. triple their numbers. So uh 
Coming in third is Wake Forest at 447. And then rounding out the fourth place spot, we have Oral Roberts at 296, which is a little shocker uh, to me, to be honest with you. Tennessee, 195, Florida, 142, Stanford, 120, and last place, Virginia at 95. Come on, Virginia. Do better. That 95 is just an embarrassment. So, But uh, I have a feeling the LSU fans are going to be rowdy, and they're coming for Ole Miss's record. I don't remember what the record – I think it was around 13,000. It's 18,000. 18,000. LSU makes it all the way, that record is going to be We can see 20, 25. I mean, uh, the the sky is the limit uh, for these Cajun fans up there at Omaha. But – Next game, Virginia, Florida. I'm picking Florida just based on their pitching staff alone. They've been totally dominant this postseason, all, all season, really. So, Tyler, Virginia, Florida, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with Florida. This is a pretty easy pick. I know that Virginia, their offense can rake, uh, but they're not going to be able to have any offense uh, against Sproat, one of their aces. I think that Florida's pitching is definitely set up to make a deep run, especially having Waldrop as your number two. So, I'll, I'll roll the Gators. Okay. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, Stanford, Wake Forest. I mean, Stanford kind of squeaked in here, luckily, with a fly ball loss in the lights against Texas. So I think their luck's going to run out. I'm picking Wake Forest to take this one. They're the number one team in the nation for a reason. Great pitching staff, dominant offense. I mean, you saw them outscore uh, in the Super Regional, uh, outscore Alabama. I want to say it was like in the 40s is how many yeah. runs they scored, which is just absurd. I mean, they had 22 in the second game. So I'm going Wake Forest. Yeah, it's definitely a lot to like about this Wake Forest team. Uh, they have it all. They're trying to make some history. Haven't won it all since 1955. Uh, so I think they're going to make some noise in game number one against Stanford. Uh, Stanford, I don't know if they're going to go with Quinn Matthews. He threw like three games in, in one game. So I'm going to go with Wake Forest. I think the Deeks move on. I mean, the guy's got a noodle arm. It was like 156 pitches. I mean, absolutely insane. So uh, Tennessee LSU, we'll get to it right now. <laughs> So I think we know our pick to win this game between the two of us is going to be LSU. But uh, pitching matchup, Skeens versus Lindsey, going to be, I mean, I want to say it's going to be a pitcher's game uh, with Paul Skeens on the mound. But, I mean, both these offenses are hot. I think Skeens can get it done against Tennessee. I'm not discrediting them. But, I mean, the way LSU's bats have been playing, it's like I believe every – uh, batter in the lineup has at least two home runs besides Braden Jobert, and that can change instantly. Uh, he had a little bit of a slump against Kentucky. Uh, but, I mean, the dimensions are very similar to Alex Box. Now, the ball does not fly as farther up here in Nebraska. But, I mean, do you think LSU's offense is going to fare well against Lindsey? Yeah, I think so. I think that this LSU offense is playing hot at the right time. I think that you could say the same about Tennessee. Tennessee – uh, I didn't even think that they're even going to make it out of the Southern Miss uh, regional. I did pick them, uh, but I was getting a little worried about them. Uh, Southern Miss got up four nothing in game number two, and then the Tennessee's offense put up a six spot uh, to really seal the deal. I think that's where really, really where they seized uh, momentum. Chase Dolander gave him quality innings. Uh, you know, Andrew Lindsay he had an okay outing against game number one against Southern Miss. Southern Miss was able to get his pitch count up uh, and really get him out of the game and test. Uh, Tennessee's bullpen so I think that Tennessee is definitely going to be all hands on deck I wouldn't be surprised if Andrew Lindsay goes six or seven innings and then ultimately we see Chase Burns uh, get somebody in there that throws 102 and, and try to test this LSU offense uh, so like we mentioned we've already seen these two teams LSU did take two out of three the first two games though were probably the two best games of the year like I mentioned Jordan Thompson that 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 double gave that five to two lead and game number two is a back and forth battle uh, in Tennessee made too many errors in that one. And that really bit them in the butt. So, but game number three, Tennessee flexed their muscle. This is whenever LSU couldn't really find a Sunday starter. I, I couldn't even remember who started game three. I think that's whenever Christian little still got the ball and we know about him. Yeah. Uh, so I think that this is going to be an ultimate battle. I do think that it's going to start as a pitcher's duel. Wouldn't surprise me if we're in the seventh inning. This was like a two to one or a three to two type of ball game. But once you get to the bullpens, I think that's when their offenses start to stretch out. I think that this Tennessee team, a lot of people, the narrative is like that this team isn't as good as last year's team. That is true. But I think that this Tennessee team, uh, you They're know, more disciplined. Next- yeah, they are more disciplined than last year. This year. Uh, they just feel like the vibe of being a, an Omaha team. You know, they were number two preseason team. They're they're supposed to be here. So I think that this right, Tennessee definitely. team 
It's going to go all in. I think that game one in Omaha is the most crucial. I think it's more crucial than a super regional game one. If you go 1-0, even if you go 2-0, I think that if you get to the driver's seat, more than times than not, you have to start 1-0 to be a national champion. So this is definitely crucial. I am going to go with the Fighting Tigers of LSU. I mean, you can't really go against Paul Skeens uh, in yeah. this matchup. And if uh, Tennessee – Tennessee's got to start out hot. I think that you have to get to Paul Skeens early, especially in the first inning. You have to strike for some runs because if you don't, Paul Skeens, we have seen him in the past. Whenever he gets going, he is just unstoppable. He's pretty much an MLB ace pitching up against college pitchers. So I'm going to go four to three. LSU gets this one done. Like I mentioned, this won't be easy. No, no game in Omaha is ever going to be easy. So I'm going to go with LSU to get the win and go to one and oh. Okay. I like it. Four, three tight game. I mean, uh, there was a, a few fans saying that maybe we should hold Paul Skeens for the potential matchup no. against Wake Forest, and I do not agree with that. You're in Omaha. You got to win every day. You got to win in advance. Um, now I know it's not a, a if one. If you didn't done. do it against Tulane, there's no way you're doing it against yeah. Tennessee. It, Tennessee is a high-powered offense, very good team. You got to throw Paul Skeens, and then hope Ty Floyd's got his best stuff against Wake Forest. So. My key player in this game against Tennessee, I'm going Josh Pearson. Keep an eye on him. He didn't play in the original matchup, but I think he can be a game changer, especially with how his bat has been lately. Um, coming in at the nine hole, really just get – if he can get all base, it gives Dylan Cruz somebody to knock in. And then, you, of course, you got Tommy White coming up after him. So my, my guy to watch this weekend is Josh Pearson. Of course, he has phenomenal play out there in left field. But if he, get, he gets those triples going, maybe a home run mix in. I mean, the man could fly. We might see some stolen bases. I think he can really disrupt that Tennessee pitching staff. I'll pick in Josh Pearson. Tyler, who's your guy to watch in this matchup against Tennessee? Yeah, I'm going to stick on the offensive side. I'm going to go Gavin Dugas. If you remember uh, last time that this LSU team faced off against this Tennessee team, I think that Dugas had one of his best series of the year. He had a couple – of key and clutch home runs. I think that whenever the postseason hits, he he had a home run against Kentucky. You know, I know this is a big ballpark, Charles Schwab Field, uh, plays more to the pitchers. So right. I think that if they win this game, Ty Floyd is going to be set up for this one. If LSU fans know, he's a, you're not really a ground ball pitcher that gets out. He's a fly ball pitcher. That's right. how he'll, be able to, he'll be able to pitch a little relaxed because he won't, yeah. no, it's not going to fly out of the park like he's used to. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I think that you got to get Gavin Dugas. You you know, he's number eight for a reason. You want your veteran guy uh, to play well. I think that he has to play well if LSU ultimately wants to get to where it is, and that's to hoist the, their seventh national championship. So I'm going to go Gavin Dugas, a key player to watch. Uh, hopefully he can, you know, do what he did against uh, Tennessee uh, in the last time that we saw him. So I look for him to get a couple of key, maybe if it comes down to the ninth inning, get a clutch base hit uh, to seal the win. I like it. I like it. I mean, he's Mr. Clutch. Uh, he's been clutch all season. Of course, he's had that nagging shoulder injury, but yeah. put it all on the line here. It's his last chance. I mean, he's done after this. This is his last shot at Omaha. Let it ride, number eight. So, uh, like you mentioned, if you win game one, it really puts you in the driver's seat. You win game two, I mean, you're you're set. That's uh, pretty, pretty much a lot. You, you got to stay in Omaha. You got to stay Unless out you're of Oregon the State like that one year, then it's not a lot. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, win game one. Let, let's just speak hypothetically here. LSU wins game one with Paul Skeens. We would assume game two, you throw uh, Ty Floyd uh, against potentially Wake Forest. Now, if Floyd gets into a little trouble, are you? if you're Jay Johnson, are you putting in Thatcher Hurd? Yeah, I think you either go Riley Cooper or Thatcher Hurd. I think that you could I think that you could potentially go Riley Cooper. Like this LSU team, none of them has really been on Omaha, but two guys have been on Collins has been and then Riley Cooper's had some experience playing in Omaha. So I think that Jay Johnson in this moment he would go with Riley Cooper. And I think that if you're really in a good spot, you're up by a couple of runs, save Thatcher Hurd and start him for game three. And I think I that agree. the way that Thatcher Hurd's been pitching. He can eat up some innings and then maybe go after, uh, Jay, uh, you know, Gavin Gidry or Griffin Herring. And so, but you still got a long way to go. We still got to get through uh, game one before we get to that. But it's always nice uh, to have a plan before. Right, exactly. And I'm just looking ahead because I don't know if we're going to put a show out in between. We might do some live reaction shows. Yeah. Um, you know, LSU wins game one. Get, uh, game eight would be the next game that they play, which is Monday night. I don't think we'll be doing Sports Scramble during the, the Omaha game. So we might be putting that one live on Tuesday. Uh, but, you know, I'm looking potentially we go 2-0. and oh, We got Wednesday game game three for LSU. We might put a show out Wednesday for that. Uh, but, you know, 
it's a lot to look look ahead. We can't predict the future, but I mean, we could call ourselves sports media at this point. I mean, we're just playing predictions. You mentioned you go Ty Floyd, potentially Riley Cooper, set up Thatcher Hurd game three to start. I mean, I think Gavin Guidry has solidified himself as the closer. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he he just got all that you want from being a closer, the mindset of that, like I've said, I mentioned, you know, what with the West Johnson news, he's, it doesn't matter who's going to be calling the pitches. He's going to throw strikes. He just has that mindset. I know he's a freshman, but he's playing like he's been there before. So I think you got to go with Gavin Guidry. And it's definitely nice and assuring to find a closer. You had a closer, you know, with Garrett Edwards and Chase Shores, but dealing with injuries, I think that even with injuries, you got to give and tip your cap to this LSU bullpen with, they're really the lowest of lows that they've been through, and they're really playing a best friend of baseball. I think that's why that LSU's in the spot. No, I agree. They they took the punches, and we had our doubts about them, but they had gotten right back up. So uh, that'll wrap up our, our Omaha talk. Last second, we got the Around Town News. Real quick, I want to congratulate Paul Skeens for winning the Dick Hauser Award as the basically college baseball's Heisman Award. So uh, congratulations to him. Last person to win it, uh, I believe it was Todd Walker from LSU. Um, if I got that name right, it's been a while. That's I think pretty good, huh? Yeah. So, it, I mean, Paul Skeens is set up to have a Joe Burrow type award season at this point. Uh, still have the Golden Spikes Award to be announced. I believe it's announced on on June 25th. So potentially after the championship series is played, if it just goes two games. Uh, but transfer portal news for LSU baseball. We had Michael Braswell, shortstop from South Carolina, um, name his uh, landing spot as the uh, LSU Tigers. I mean, does Jay Johnson get to rest at all? You're out here trying to prepare for Omaha, and you're you're dealing with recruiting and transfer portal news. I mean, what do you see uh, Braswell bringing into the Tigers? Yeah, like uh, our friend Wade mentioned that he didn't see much playing time at South Carolina. He he was a big, uh, tra- you know, he was a big recruit out of the state uh, of South he was, Carolina. I believe he was but, one of the, the number one defensive player in South Carolina out of high school. Yeah, he, I think that you see his numbers. Uh, he had a uh, 255 uh, the, on this offensive season. I think that the offense coming in Jay Johnson's system, we've seen guys uh, that have really, you know, brought it up. They, like a guy like Kay Beloso, he was struggling. Under Paul Maneri and Jay Johnson comes in, and then this year, look what he's doing. So I think that if Michael Braswell, he can get his offense going. He already has the defense. He's one of the best shortstops in the SEC. And shortstop's going to be uh, – this team going into the 2024 season is something that I only want to look forward to of how many guys it's going to be. We're just going to enjoy it right now. <laughs> yeah, it really reminds me of – the 2019 LSU football team of how many guys that you're going to be losing. And hopefully for this LSU team, it's not like the 2020 season when you're hoving around 500 yeah. and missing out uh, on a, on a bowl. So I think that Michael Braswell, you, you're going to slide him in the shortstop. Gavin Gidry, we don't know if, what, what he's going to be. Is he going to be a shortstop or a second baseman and also going to be a closing pitcher? So I think that he could definitely be a nice uh, addition to this team. No, I definitely agree with you. I mean, we'll we'll see how it – I mean, Jay has mentioned he wants Gavin to play both sides of the ball. We'll, we'll see what happens with the pitching staff, if you can afford to have them both play both sides, or maybe you work them into some sort of starting pitcher role. But um, with that, that, wrap, that wraps up this week's episode of Bayou Bengal Bites. As always, like, comment, subscribe. We appreciate it. Let us know in the comments uh, what you think LSU is going to do in Omaha. I'm sure we'll get a, a lot of LSU fans saying they're going to win it all. And honestly, I agree with you. I think we've got a good chance to, to take it all this season. So with that, have, have a great day, everyone, and go Tigers.